So right now we're going to start with the workshop with uh, with our special guest, James Jackson. And let's hear. This is a one part. There's a couple parts where I have to read word for word. This is one of them. It says, <clears throat> James is the founder of the Utah Black Chamber since its inception in 2009. It has grown not only to serve black businesses and professionals, but also has become a large voice for the BIPOC community. That is, I have no idea what that stands for, but we'll figure it out in a bit. Uh, from this growth, James has written articles on diversity and leadership for Utah Business Magazine and has a, a con ha was a contributing act author to an Amazon bestseller, Leading Through the Pandemic, Wisdom from Unconventional Leaders at the end of 2020. February 1, February 1 of this year, James led in the production of the Black Chambers book, Black Utah, Stories from a Thriving Community. I'm excited to hear from James. All right, let's give it up. Let's show him how excited we are. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that mic is nice. You know, I don't know about y'all, but every time I hold a mic like this, I do feel like I'm about to do some stand-up. You know, so I, I think Fonzie felt it already, you know, making y'all laugh. But um, anyway, so I'm excited to be here with you today and share with you the excitement about Black Utah, trying to give you some tips and tricks on the process that it takes to really publish a book. Um, it's not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that much. We did our book in 10 months. Never would recommend that to anybody. Um, I took I took the short route and had other people write it for me, uh, but I'll go through all of that. But I believe everybody has a story to tell. Have you ever? How many of you have kids? Have you ever told your kids something they just and they didn't grasp it, but their friend or a cousin or neighbor said something and they grasped them it immediately, and you're like, I just said that to you, or been trying to tell you that, right? Well, we all want to share our story. We all can learn from each other in many different ways, and we perceive and receive things in different ways. And so that's why I believe everybody has a story to tell. And that's, you know, so whether or not you want your strive, if you're looking to strive and to write a book, here's a way to tell your story. And I like to go through my tips. I kind of like to dial into the radio station, WWRTP. So if you're taking notes, you can do WWRTP down the side of your paper there, and I'll go through this radio station with you. W, the first W is work. It takes, one, it takes a lot of work. So you got to be willing to be committed to the work. And also, this is your work. This is the opportunity for you to let your creative juices flow and just tell your story. You're going to use your, what's the artistic side of the brain, the left brain or the right brain? The right brain. I don't know, I'm dyslexic. I'm left-handed, so I'm always getting it confused, right? So this is the opportunity for you to just kind of let your creative juices flow and really just kind of get in and just tell your story. Just let, just to let go. Um, taking your journal writing to a whole new level. The second W is, <laughs> and then believe it or not, you gotta be, you gotta like to write. You'd be surprised how many people want to write a book but don't like to write, right? They think they want to write a book, and they go down and get on that paper or their keyboard, and they're like, they sit there at the screen for 10 minutes, and then they go to Facebook or LinkedIn or CNN or start watching Netflix or something, then they got to go back, right? It is, like I said, it's not for the faint of heart. You got to be willing and like to write. I started writing blogs here and there. Um, I'm a speaker and trainer, so a lot of thoughts and ideas come to my head, and I have a folder of all these training ideas. Um, I have a folder of all the speaking presentations I've done, and I just write all that stuff down. And then I started writing little articles here and there. Then I started pitching articles to Utah Business Magazine and do little things of 1,400 words to 5,000 words. This is kind of get me used to like to write, because that's just the first step, because you know, this, this book here is 272 pages. Right, and I'm over, you know, sixty thousand words. So you really have to be, you really have to like to write. Um, and that's the thing, if you're gonna if you're gonna write a book, you gotta be, you gotta like to read. To be honest with you, a lot of people write a book, but many of them have never read a book. Pretty fascinating, right? You gotta be willing to like to read. And here's the main reason why. 
right? You're going to want to do some homework about yourself. If you're really trying to tell your story, you want to convey that message to the world, you want to you want to do some research on you. Like what what is it about you that made you who you are? What what articles can back it up? What examples are there out there that can share your message and convey it in a way for most to understand? Uh, you know, I'm 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 an introverted, shy person, which in other words I like to call I'm a nerd. And so I need to reach out to other articles. Like how can I how can I relate to the introverted community? How can I relate to people who are just out there and excited about the world and I just like to be in the corner of my house? The pandemic did me wonders. Just sitting in the corner and just did me for a little while. It was great. Right? So you have to be you have to like to read. Pull some stuff. And then when the book's all finished, you have to read your own book. Right? You got to go through all the, you know, make sure along with the editors that you're going through the the all the grammar. You got to make sure that you are finding some things that may need some tweaks here and there because you're reading, oh, that didn't sound right. Let me write it this way. You got to read your whole book, right? Um, the next thing is timing. We all go through certain seasons of life. And I'm not talking about summer, winter, fall, or spring. We all have our life seasons as well. You know, the pandemic was a winter for a lot of people. Put people in depression. You know, it, we, we saw a lot of deaths happen over those last couple of years, right? It, it's a winter for a lot of everybody. And so we're going to go through our peaks and valleys in life. We're going to go through this journey and through this process. So you want to identify when is the right time for you to go out and write a book? When is that peak going to be for you to say, you know what? It's time. I'm ready. Let's go. I've been wanting to write a book for the last six, seven years. But I wanted to write for just that right time to make sure that wh what I put out there is going to be impactful, right? Which leads me to the last letter, which is purpose. People will write a book to kind of share their, to elevate their platform, right? But if you want to take your ego out of the way and focus on your purpose, people want to know about you. So take advantage of the ability to like to talk about yourself not talk about the product or talk about what you, you know, the things that your business has accomplished. Talk a lot about you. Who's the person behind this business, behind this product, behind this service? Choose your purpose over your product, right? Why is it, why is it making this impact today? What problem were you trying to solve? What was your purpose behind starting this business, right? It's just not just whatever thing you're trying to sell out there and it's making sales and doing amazing. People want to be more concerned about the impact in the community, the impact it's bringing to your friends and family, the impact that it's bringing to everyone around you, and the vision for going forward, right? And last, you want to choose purpose over profit. It's highly unlikely you're going to make your money back on this book, right? When you write a book, you don't expect to use it for profit. You expect it to elevate and shine or make your purpose shine. We, we're a nonprofit, Utah Black Chamber, of course. We're a 501c6 Chamber of Commerce. So, yes, we, we are a revenue-generating organization. And I already knew out the gate to put this book out there. It was, it was a stretch for us. But I looked at the purpose itself. And so how this all began in towards the end of 2020, some random person reached out to me on LinkedIn. And I'm really wary about people who just randomly reach out on LinkedIn and they say, hey, I looked at your profile and all of a sudden I was like, uh-oh, here we go. It looks like you're doing amazing things. I would love for you to be a contributing author to this book I want to write. And what sparked my interest, like, well, I've always wanted to write a book. I've been doing articles. Now I can, can be a contributing author, not to worry about writing a whole book. Sounds great. So at least I set up a Zoom call with her, first to see if this person's even real, right? Um, and we just chatted up. Come to find out, she just started her publishing company, and she thought this would be a great way to start her business, find authors who eventually want to publish a book as by helping her publish her own book and just learn from all of, all of us. So she identified 25 authors from across the world, a lot of them here in the US. She went to Australia, a couple in Europe, 
and we all contributed to how are we leading our organization, our community during this pandemic. And so we all just wrote a whole chapter, about five, 6,000 words in this book. Um, and then that really got me excited. I was like, I have my own little profile on Amazon. It's like time, right? Going back to that WRTP, it's time. But I wanted to identify my purpose. So I went back to Kaylee. I said, hey, Kaylee, I have this thought. What do you think about this book idea? I run a black chamber of commerce in Utah. A lot of stuff has been said about Utah and its diversity. I want to change the narrative. I want to change this diversity landscape. I want to elevate what Utah is doing, but from a black perspective. And we know so many black individuals doing incredible things. I think it'd be awesome if I can just interview them, right? That's where I cheated. I let them write their book by just them telling the story. Fulfilling my purpose. I want to change the narrative. I want to change the, the, the story, change the perspective of what people think about Utah, especially those outside of Utah. Because believe it or not, we haven't been a very good job promoting Utah over the last couple of years. From the DOJ to a couple of jazz game interactions with fans to and that's making head, those are the things that are making headlines. So what type of positive things can we bring to light, particularly when it comes to the conversation about diversity, equity, and inclusion? It's, a, it's not up, up to a Utah Black Chamber to tell the story. We're an organization. That's what we're built for. Well, we dive in deeper. Let's hear from the community. Let's let them share their story. Why are they in Utah? Why do they want to stay here? When I graduated high school, most of my friends left me hanging. They went to Atlanta, D.C., Chicago. They wanted more diversity. School was free for me, so I stayed. But yet, more people kept coming. Something's drawing you in. What is that? And then, why did you start this organization, you know, Miss Essie's Barbecue? You know, why did you start this organization to help elevate and lift and help educate and serve, you know, uh, black girls who have been adopted by white parents, right? What's all this you're doing here that makes your purpose here worthwhile and wanting to stay? I wanted all those stories. So I set out on a mission and identified 30-something individuals. We sat down and just chatted it up. Um, and Kaylee thought it was an excellent idea. And we mapped it all out and said, what better way to publish this book than Black History Month, right? So we tell the story earlier in the first chapter about Black history in general, how there was black people here before Brigham Young, all the way up to until today. What created and started the black community here from, from the fur trappers in Cache Valley to you know, Brigham Young and his three slaves, Os you know, Oscar Crosby, Greenflake, and Hart Clay, to Greenflake saying, this is the place, right? There's a debate about that right now, but we're pretty confident it was Greenflake because Brigham Young was back in the valley sick. He sent Greenflake out here. He said, nah, this is the place, right? And then leading to the Buffalo Soldiers and the military to the railroad, right? So we went through all that history real quick in the introduction. Then we dived in to all in the interviews and phenomenal stories from folks like Marcus Jones, Bree Ray, our chairman of the board, Mr. Stephen Johnson, they're representing just phenomenal stories of what they're doing here in the community and why they're sticking around. So that was the purpose. And here's what's fascinating about that, is that once the book was published, first it, the, I sent out a link to all the individual contributors to say, hey, review this book for me. Let me know your thoughts. People found the link. You tell people it's going to be on Amazon, they start Googling. They ignored the whole release date. I, under, I underestimated the anticipation of this purpose to a point where since January 27th, we've had a new two or three new chamber members every single day. Taking us back to when we exploded. Yes, thank you. Taking us back to when the, the chamber exploded in June 2020. We all know what happened at the end of May in 2020, and we were put in front of that. So we had a, mem a chamber member or two join the chamber every day for three months, right? The chamber increased 
400% over the last three years. And we're experiencing the same wave now. We have eight events around this book this month from webinars with, with, with organizations and companies to panel discussions to concerts all surrounding this book. They want to learn not just from me, they, not just from the contributors. They want to learn about the community in general. So that was the timing of Black History Month, right? And that's what it's done for us. And that's why that purpose is so important. We had a call, or I, had, I was on the call with the US Black Chambers, leadership that represents 150 Black Chambers across the country. And I educated them, this is why we did this book. And I think it'd be great, whether you have a lot of diversity in your area or not, this is how you can elevate your community. And a lot of those chamber leaders are taking notes and the U.S. Black Chamber says, this is a great idea. Let's, let's chat it up and see how we can get national attention towards this book. So really trying to, so it's going back to my purpose, changing this landscape, changing the narrative about black Utah and elevating us to the platform where I knew where we can, where we can grow to. So when you think about writing your book, that's what you want to think about. WWRTP, are you willing to work? Are you willing to write? Are you willing to read? When is the right timing for you? And identify your purpose. So thank you guys so much. And I think we have a few minutes left for questions. Any questions? What's something new that you learned from someone that was one of these like contributing stories in your book that just stood out to you? Oh, you want me to pick one? Um, uh, well, you know, I, I'll use a couple of folks here, you know, talking with Bree and the organization that she started. I really didn't know Bree Ray prior to this book, so I got to know her during this book. So that was great. And all the stuff that she's doing with her nonprofit. Um, and then just the process. I've known Marcus since college, 1998, what, 1998, something like that? A little, little while ago. Um, and I've always known Miss Essie's Barbecue, but the background behind what got him to starting this business was phenomenal. And I won't steal their thunder, but it was, it was great to learn from that. Something you said sounded a little bit contradictory. You said, for your purpose, you take your ego out of it, but then you went on to say about telling your story. Can you kind of explain that a little better about ego out, story in? Right. You can tell your story all day, right? But the ego for it all is more cynical, right? It's more kind of share, it's all about me, all about me, all about me. Your story is how is it growing? the community around you? How is your story elevating the impact of your business? How is your story contributing to the growth of your business, your community, and, and just the overall environment? People need to know that background of how you're qualified and what your skills are and able to make that happen. James, I see that um, you use the publisher Soul Excellence Publishing, right? Is that right for your book? How do you, or how did you go about selecting your publisher, and what would you recommend for those that want to do that same process? It was a relationship. It was the same person that published the book leading through the pandemic, and that's what it begins from, this relationship. There's two ways that you can really publish a book. You got the traditional publishing, and you got the self-publishing. Traditional publishing is what most people know about. They write this book, they go through this whole strenuous process, because they got to be the editor, they got to be the designer. They got to be everything for this book and then pitch it to a publisher and see if they would take it on. And this publisher is asking you, what's your reach like? Because if you don't have over 10,000 people on the email list, we're not going to touch it. And then they, it got to represent what type of thing that they're looking for within, if it aligns with what they're trying to publish. And then self-publishing is where you already know this whole process. You know how to get the book on Amazon. You already, you already know how to, you already have your distribution strategy. Like, you have that down. The great thing about Soul Excellence is that there was a hybrid model where she had all the access to know how to do that. All we had to do was write it. She introduced me to graphic designers. She introduced me to a ghostwriter. She introduced me to a team of folks that surrounded me, um, which was great. So I can just intently focused on 
the book itself and then, you know, go through the process of the design and the structure and everything like that, which was which was a lot of fun. All right, that's unfortunately all the time we have for questions. Let's give it up for James, guys.